Hi everyone! Today I'm sharing a card using Monfon's Ahoy Midi stamp set. And I've had this stamp set in my collection for a bit of time, and I've used it here and there. But I wanted to pull it out for today's card, which is a little different because it's a mix of stamping and origami. To start off, I'm stamping some of the images on a piece of white cardstock. I'm going to be stamping these images twice because I just want more characters to use for the card. Once they've been stamped out, I'm going to run this through my Scan and Cut, which helps cut out these images for me, and they're ready to cut be colored. Since there are so many images, it's going to take a bit of time to color, and if you're not interested in the coloring, I'll leave the timestamp below where you can fast forward to the card assembling part of the video. Otherwise, any of the colors that I'm using will be listed down below in the description bar. For today's card, as always, I'm using a mix of Copic markers and Spectrum Noir markers. So I'll go ahead and play the music and I'll pick up when I finish coloring. Okay, now that the coloring is done, I'm going to start off with a square piece of paper that's measured at five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Once I have that square ready, I'm going to score it down the middle diagonally. Using my Teflon bone folder, I'll help crease that fold. So once I have that triangle ready, I'm going to score it once again at a different kind of angle. I have one of the points of the triangle at two and a quarter, and then I have the bottom part point of the triangle at three fourths inch. And I'm gonna go ahead and score that down. So it's not a straight line, it's at a slant. And I'm gonna fold that and make sure that the crease is nice and crisp. And I'm going to fold that backwards again just to refold, just to make sure that that score line is creased properly. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And this is a little bit of the tricky part. It's not too tricky, but you just kind of collapse it. So I'm going to show it again. Where you open it up, you press down in the middle, you close on that sail part and then you close the boat. So it's a very simple boat, but I, it's a little harder to explain. So I figured that the video would be helpful. And you can always rewind just to see how it folds, but I think once you just try it out yourself, it'll be really easy. The idea behind the card is for the characters to be hanging out inside the boat. So I wanted to add a bit of detail for the boat itself. So I pull out the Create a Smile wood grain stamp and I mask off the sail portion and I'm going to stamp this pattern onto the outside of the boat. 
I'll do it for the front side and then I'll go ahead, clean it off the stamp and re-stamp it on the other side of the boat. And remember to move that post-it to mask off the sail. You don't want the wood grain pattern on the sail. I mean, if you do, that's cool too, but for me, I need to mask that part off. I'm using Walnut Stain Distress Ink to color up the boat portion of this card really quickly, and I really like that because of the wood grain pattern, you don't really have to work too hard to blend because it kind of just looks like actual wood where the color isn't super even or super blended. Once I have that ready, I'm going to move on to coloring the sail. So I'm going to actually open this up and draw a couple of lines, two lines for the pole and then two lines for the sail itself. It's nothing very difficult to do. I'm just using a Copic multi-liner pen so I can use alcohol markers to help color this in. And even with the coloring of this, I do this as quick as possible and use the broad tip of the marker. And I know that most people don't use the broad tip very often, but I actually do just to color up portions of an image that are much larger and don't need blending. For the little images, I'm putting score tape on the back of the treasure chest and I'm using my thinner score tape for the really small images. There's the parrot and the treasure map and I'm just putting it in the hands of the two boy characters. Uh, for the score tape, I'm using the 1 8 inch because it's so thin that it works really well. I didn't really have to trim down the piece of score tape so it would fit. It actually just fit nicely. So I'm also adding score tape to the feet of the characters and I'm going to have two characters standing at the helm of the boat and I'm going to have two characters standing in the back portion of the boat but I'm going to put them directly on the sail. And this just makes it easier because I can just add the score tape directly to the sail. And I actually struggled with this card because of the Copic bleeding on the two front images. When I'm using white cardstock with Copics, it, they usually bleed through so you can see it on the back side. And I had to walk away from this card because at the end, I didn't really like it. I came back the next day and had a fix for it. And that required a little bit of extra work. And if the Copic bleeding doesn't bug you, then you can leave it as is, but I do go back and I think that I'm much happier with the card by adding that fix. So for these two characters on the sail, I also realized that when you open up the boat and let it stand, they look like they were floating in the air and usually pirates aren't magical. So I had to ground them and I did this easily by drawing two lines and coloring it in with a dark marker so it covers up the lines that I had previously drawn and I don't think it's that big of a deal but for me when you looked in and saw two characters floating it looked a little weird so I really wanted to create that ground for them to stand on. Also for the sail portion of the card I had characters kind of hanging off of the sail float and when you open it up, they bump into each other. So I just wanted you to be aware of that when, if you decide to create this card, because I ended up adjusting them where they're more or less the entire image is on the sale portion. For the sentiment, I'm adding the happy birthday on the side that had space. And it's just going to be at an angle along the sale. And I think that that ended up being pretty cool. On the other side, I actually wanted to add one of the smaller sentiments, but it just didn't have any room with that treasure chest there. No big deal. This was the finished version of the card until I came back the next day. I decided that I wanted to create the back image of the two characters. And so I am using Paper Smooch's mirror image stamp. And for this, I needed to mask off portions of their face because they wouldn't have faces on both sides. You could 
if you wanted to, but I thought that would be a little weird, especially since it's not a spinner. Um, and you would look at it and, you know, the reverse image would just have another face on the back. And I didn't want that. So I just went ahead and cut out the portions of the images where their face was, any hair and any clothes that wouldn't be um, on the reverse side. And so I do this directly on the stamp image because I don't want to move the post-it. I want it to be stamped exactly where it is. And so I'll remove any part that I don't want masked off and I'll stamp this up. I also mess up here and I redid this but didn't show it on camera. You want to remove, once you apply the Versamark ink to the mirror image, you want to remove the posted images that you had masked off because it does transfer just a little bit from the post-it and you'll have a, some marks on your images. If that doesn't bug you, you can leave it as is because the Versamark ink does dry on the post-it and it doesn't transfer that much. But just keep in mind that it'll probably be best to remove that post-it of the area you masked. So since I have the reverse image, I went ahead and fixed it up a little bit with Copic Multiliner and I'm just coloring it the exact same colors as I did previously for the two images. For their face portion, I'll just be coloring in their hair. And this worked out really nicely, and this is the reverse image of these two characters. And I'm going to pull them off of the boat, and I'm going to glue them together. And I think that this made me a lot happier. You couldn't see the Copic bleeding. You actually saw the, the back side of the characters. And I think that this worked out so much better. I'm just using Tombow Mono Mote glue to glue these images together. And once I have them ready, I'm going to add them to the front of the card. And originally I had them back to back to kind of cover up that Copic bleeding. But since I have the reverse image, I can move her a little bit over. And when you, on one side of the card, you'll see the back side. And then on the other side, you'll see the front of the other character. And I think that this card is super cute. I do go back and just add distress brown distress ink to the inside of the boat only because I didn't like how the white looked but other than that this card is done I really liked how it turned out even though I had to go back the next day and sometimes you just have to do that but I think that this turned out way cuter than I had imagined in my head and I'm so happy that I added the reverse image because I really think that it just finished it off so I hope you enjoyed today's card and I'll see you guys next time for another video. Have a great day. Bye.